Hey everybody. So today I wanted to talk to you about my medium satchel from Saddleback Leather and this is in tobacco. But it's actually the darker tobacco and we'll get into that in a moment. But I also want to tackle how to sell a bag on the internet. And um, unfortunately my time with this bag has come to an end. I've thought about it for several weeks, months about if I should let it go or if I shouldn't. And I just kind of want to talk you through my thought process. I have note cards, legit three by five note cards to talk to you about my, um, I guess my reasoning and just my approach to selling a leather bag. And we could go into this a little bit. Should we do that? Um, you have seen this one pop up in several bags, especially the comparison bag videos where I'm comparing it to the Indiana Satchel or the small satchel, and um, it served me well. I got it from uh, a fellow friend on Facebook in these buy sell groups, Hector. Hi Hector, thank you again for letting me experience this bag. But um, since purchasing it, I have used it several, several times, but I've also found other bags that kind of do the same job. I'm I do own a lot of bags, but I still like to get to the fundamental reason function of these bags. And so if I have so many bags doing the same function, I start really thinking, okay, who or what bag can I let go? And um, one huge reason I want to let this one go is because I think it'll make somebody else very happy. Um, emotionally, I think this is just the ideal color for tobacco. And I think there's a lot of people out there who really like this color as well. That was one reason I wanted to let it go. Um, I know Saddleback Leather has discontinued this size. They seem on their website to only be selling the large satchel, and this is the medium. The dimensions are 12 um, in width, 10 in height, and 4 in depth, and it weighs 4 pounds. Um, this came to me extremely loved and well used. I mean, look at this, this is intense. And I'm actually, I should insert it right here, so I'll still be talking, but um, these are photos from when I purchased a medium satchel, maybe 2014, um, in the color chestnut. And it was a Dave's deal, and I was so excited. It was my, I think my first Saddleback leather purchase um, that I actually loved and used. And I took it to Rome, Italy with my husband, and that was just so fun, but that bag was so stiff. It was so stiff, it was cutting into me. You know, my first trip with it was overseas. It's like wearing a brand new pair of shoes on a, you know, on a big vacation where you're walking everywhere. It's not smart. You gotta bring your loyal tried and true, <laughs> tried, and true tried and true tennis shoes. Do you guys say sneakers or do you say tennis shoes? I say tennis shoes. Okay, so um, when I saw that Hector had this one, we've been talking back and forth, and I just loved its color. I loved how soft it was, and it can be turned into a backpack. If you can see, there's like a knot through the D-ring, and shoulder pad. I believe I have another shoulder pad, but I took it off for some reason. Um, I'll need to be, make sure to put that one back on. And I've worn it in backpack mode a lot for my trips. Um, maybe I'll insert now some pictures from Banff when I wore this um, backpacking this past summer with my husband. That was pretty fun. Are you guys back? Yeah. Okay. Can you guys go run into the other room? Okay, thank you. Mark took Ada for a walk. And it's like negative one degrees here, so that was sweet of him. Uh, anyway, so I, I was in Banff with this and I really enjoyed it and um, I haven't really mentioned anything negative yet outside of weight. This bag is heavy, four pounds. Um, I am in good health and I have no back or shoulder problems, but if you have anything like that, just avoid heavy bags. Just be nice to yourself and don't put yourself through it. But I'm 30, 31, yeah, I'll be 32 soon. And uh, I didn't have issues with the, the the pain of the weight, I guess. It's just I found something lighter. I'll show you what that is in a second. So I can give you uh, another overview. There are two side pockets. They're generous in size, um, very soft, 
and this has a full back pocket you can even see kind of the old original tobacco color um, and we can jump in I love buckle closure I don't mind it at all it's very nice this is smooth pigskin and on the inside we have a floppy pocket a key fob with a key or a hook and two pockets if you can see one here and one there uh, I paint as a hobby well I have an interior design degree I do plein air outside which is painting outdoors with watercolor so I, I do a lot of stuff but with plein air you have a lot of supplies and so this was perfect because it could fit my 9x12 arches watercolor block weight 140 are any of you painters out there do anybody know what I just said and this was perfect for my plein air supplies a water bottle my camera um, snacks you know and uh, it's just it's just a good bag but I have really found that looking at all my bags I think I want to keep the ones that have the best function and the ones I use the most the ones that bring me it somewhat of an emotional joy or a great memory that goes with them and um, when I do decide to sell things I maybe I'll get into this later too but I'll say it so I don't forget um, I I separate the bags from the rest the ones that I want to sell and I just keep them in a different room for a month maybe and I just let them be I don't if I want to use them I use them but if I didn't think about them and I didn't miss it I mean why can't I just sell it have the cash or trade for another bag and um, maybe somebody else has been really looking for a medium satchel in this dark tobacco which I hope is the case so uh, right now I'm going to compare it to my medium simple backpack which once I bought that medium simple backpack I have never thought for a second of letting it go do, do, do. don't they look like the same color here's your screenshot <laughs> um, so this is a medium simple it's been in several videos oh, this is heavy too it's got a great patina just marbling everywhere um, this has been in tons tons of trips with me still love it uh, this is the older model where it has the detachable straps and these are the pads that are original and I do believe Saddleback sells those pads again now because we all love them. So don't you see how they match? And there was a little bit of like, oh, you know, when I'm traveling, my two bags will match, I'll carry this or Mark will carry this or vice versa. So those compare, but here's the one that I'm replacing it with. I think that so far this is the thought process. This is the Love 41 Hobo Purse and um, it has a very similar size. Can you see where I'm going with this? So why keep both if they both do the same function? And I don't wanna hear that I have way too many medium sized small bags that have the same function. Those are, that's a different story. There's no story. I just, I like more options of bags when they're smaller or medium but my larger bags I'd rather have less options does that make sense I don't know so these really have a similar function and um, this one was oh what was the price 210 I want to say it weighs about two pounds and this is four pounds and uh, for now I want to try this and give it a go all my watercolor supplies fit so there we go um, but right now, maybe we will move into how do I take photos of this leather bag. And I'm going to be doing that with my cell phone. All right, so here we go. This is shooting on my cell phone, the video, and it's just kind of demonstrating my thought process here. I'm actually inside right now because I mentioned it's so dark. Um, I'm, at, I'm now editing the lighting on my camera to see this is brighter, this is darker. And I actually like the darker look. So um, I can take photos while I'm actually filming right now. But I want to explain. Behind me, which I can show you now. So there's the chair I was sitting in when I was filming. Camera tripod. Behind me is the outdoors. Here's my lovely lit focus. There we go. 
Sorry for that blinding light. This is my backyard. I, I have a nice fence, but you know, neighbors come with all shapes and sizes. They're very lovely people. But what I'm showing you is the light is behind me. Here is my bag and the light is behind me. So many photos I see on Facebook or eBay are like, the window is behind the bag and I can even demonstrate this. Do you see how we're kind of losing all those amazing qualities that I like in this tobacco color? And um, for me, as kind of an experienced buyer, I know that's gonna be a really beautiful tobacco and I might pick it up and actually purchase it. But again, when I move back over here, we're gonna see more of that dynamic marbling and color. So uh, I would suggest taking a head-on picture. I have some greenery around mine, which actually is a really nice contrast. Um, most important thing I would say is that the light is behind you. Take great pictures of the patina and the bottom parts of the bag. Um, actually, this is an example. I should stuff this bag to take a photo. Um, and there's kind of like a difference in that. When it's stuffed, it's actually just showing more of its potential and making sure I'm taking actual pictures while I'm doing this. Um, let me go grab a pillow so I can stuff it. What a lumbar pillow, um, bringing down the brightness again. I'll take a picture. And with it stuffed, you're going to see its full potential. It's just going to look a little bit more rich. And you know what? You got competition when you're selling a bag, so you really should take you know an extra half hour every day to make it the right way um, so you can get you know the maximum amount of money you want from the sale uh, so this is the pillow sticking out can you see that so maybe I'll go lower and let's take a picture of the back You know, really what I'm doing is I'm sharing way too many secrets of my own so that I'm going to have more competition out there when I'm selling something. I don't know. I just think information is so powerful and you guys need to know uh, possibly what I've experienced in my pros and cons of selling and we can all learn from it. Uh, so there are the photos and um, I would recommend if there's any major flaws to really zoom in and and show some character or show like what people can expect. Um, maybe people would want to be interested in these scars on my bag. Take interior shots. And because the light's behind me, check out how much more powerful that inside shot is. Maybe another picture of just the front here. Isn't that tobacco amazing? And you know, your buyer will be more informed. What I was saying was make sure you are putting your measurements. Make sure that you are telling them the weight. Um, sometimes I tell them the previous retail price. Um, that's my kitchen over there. Isn't that fun? <laughs> and just more information is going to help people make a decision faster. Uh, sometimes I get caught in these battles when I'm selling something and people are just asking question after question. And really what that's going to do is um, waste your time, waste their time, and possibly more people will just move on from the sale because you didn't give enough information. So let's jump back to uh, more of the ways to sell your bag. So I'm going to keep looking off my notes and kind of just informing you on how to sell a leather bag. And um, one more thing about the photos is I had that bag up on a table. So my camera lens was really eye to eye with the bag. So if you have a bag on the ground and you're kind of shooting um, an angle more above it, that's not as ideal. So get the bag either up to your level or go down to the bag's level with your camera. And those pictures will turn out better as well. I like to research bags that um, use bags on the market and I want to know, like when I buy a bag, um, I normally sell it a variety of ways. I sometimes sell it for the price I got. Uh, people call it a catch and release. And so you're just kind of passing on a great deal to somebody else. 
um, sometimes I'll buy one and use it for a year and I wanna add another 50 bucks, $100 to it. I do the extra mile, I would say over 60% of the time and reach out to the original buyer, excuse me, the original seller and I say, hey, I'm gonna sell this and I'm gonna sell it for a little bit more, is that okay? Or do you wanna buy it back? And 100% of the time, everyone's been like, go for it, go sell it at whatever you want, I don't care anymore. Which is nice because I kind of make an ally by not just buying something and selling it for an outrageous amount, which is fair and legal and fine, but um, in a way I'm kind of just making more friends and keeping the peace. If I do want to sell it for a really high price that um, in a faster turnaround, I sometimes do it in a different platform. Maybe I do it eBay, you could do Poshmark. I wouldn't always do it in the same circle of friends. Um, does that make sense? So I like to research what's the going rate for a medium satchel. That's what I'll do for this one. And uh, I think color plays a huge part in the resale value of a satchel. Um, I think I have an ideal color, an ideal patina and floppiness. So I'm gonna add a premium to my price. Um, if it was brand new out of the box, I'd probably either sell it right at retail or 25 or 50 below because why would people buy yours over buying it on a website? But it gets to the sweet spot when a bag is so old that it becomes really desirable because nobody has to break it in and they just get to wear it and claim that they did all the patina. Um, oh, look at this. On my notes, I wrote the differences between selling on Facebook and selling on eBay. So let me go through these. On Facebook, uh, you probably won't actually get to sell your bag at retail. People are gonna go to the website over buying yours um, if it's brand new. I love to include free shipping. So I add that to my price, it's in my mind. I say CONUS USA, which means the continental, <laughs> oh no, what does CONUS mean? I've been writing CONUS USA for so long. Eh, it's fine. I can handle that I don't know this. I'll write it below. But what that really means is continental US stateside so that people, I'm not going to be shipping to, um, I'm not doing free shipping to Dubai, but I will uh, negotiate with a buyer about shipping if it's international and including Hawaii. <laughs> so uh, adding free shipping on my end, I'm gonna use USPS. I'm going to print a shipping label at home, use one of my boxes, and I'll go into all of that in a moment too. But uh, adding free shipping makes people see your price and just know that's their price. There's not going to be this added $25 for shipping. Okay, so Facebook, add great photos. Um, there's a lot of specialty groups on Facebook. Are you guys fine that I'm just chatting to the camera? I always get nervous about this. I'm just gonna keep going. The views will tell me if you like it or not. Um, Specialty groups. So I have a lot of Judy and Burke bags, um, but I don't sell them in my Saddleback Leather buy sell group or the Love 41 buy sell group. I sell those in the Dooney and Burke sell group. Um, I have some rough and tumble bags. Well, one, and if I were to ever sell it, I would start there. So start your bag, sell it in a specialty group first. I think you all know that one. Um, so Facebook is my number one preferred choice to place to sell a bag. My second is eBay. Uh, my preferred way of collecting payment is PayPal. And um, oh, here's another tip for photos. Consider modeling the bag. Um, I'm 5'5", and I think that's a pretty average height. And sometimes it helps people understand uh, what the bag will look like on you, especially if it's a newer bag to people. I just sold a Marlando satchel to someone and they were like, can you please put that next to other bags so I understand like relatively how big this is? And I put it next to a cereal box. So everyone knows what the cereal box size is. <laughs> and it worked, it sold the bag. Um, include dimensions and weight. And this is, this is a very case by case scenario, except returns. When I started doing this in 2014, I was really on the fence about everything. That was a lot of money. I couldn't understand uh, excuse me, buying something from a stranger of a bag I've never seen and just being stuck with it. So I reached out to the sellers and said, excuse me, could I pay for shipping back to you 
if I don't like this. So kind of a return policy in like the first 10 days. And bless their heart, three or four people in my exchanges have done that for me. And now I'm very confident in what I'm buying and what I, I kind of know what I'm doing and how much, if I'm buying something and I don't like it, I know I can resell it pretty quickly. Um, but that's just an idea and that is going to be sometimes turned down. But I was willing to pay the shipping so it really just kind of wasted the other person's time but um, they weren't gonna lose any money. Okay, moving on to eBay. Why I like using eBay. A much bigger audience. Uh, these specialty groups, I mean, the buy sell one that I'm a part of with Mike Allen, hi Mike, and, and all the other admins, um, that's up to like 7,000 people. So that's pretty good, but eBay, you know, it's hundreds and thousands of people and it's international and it's just a broader audience. So sometimes when, um, if I'm gonna sell a bag like a Marc Jacobs bag, and there's no specialty group on Facebook, it's gonna sell really well on eBay because everyone knows the brand Marc Jacobs and it's gonna just, you know, go the distance. Okay, um, on eBay you can sell closer to retail price, especially if it's a discontinued item. So uh, that's something I like to think about is, you know, is this now out of stock? Is this last season and I can get closer to retail price and eBay people are just fine with it. But there are more fees. There are more fees on eBay. They call it fee bay. Hmm. Yeah, I just put it, roll it into my cost. I try not to worry about it too much. I always offer free shipping on eBay too, so it makes me stand out compared to somebody else who's gonna make you pay shipping. Oh, but I did write one clause. Don't put free shipping if it's a very, very heavy bag on eBay. That'll get you. Um, have have the seller buy it. Like this four pound bag, if I were to sell it on eBay, I would add a lot. I would have no free shipping. Um, again, great. please add great photos on eBay. You have to cover your butt and disclose the flaws. eBay will get you and you'll be in trouble and you don't want that. So make sure you're disclosing the flaws of your bag. If you write it out and somebody still buys it and they hate that flaw, you're covered because you just closed it. Um, I like to have it a uh, set price, like a buy it now option. Um, I don't really like the auction format. Uh, it makes me feel anxious. The price is normally too low. It never really, I mean, bidding wars do get up higher, but. <laughs> Buy it now, I set it for maybe seven days, possibly 30, but um, maybe you disagree and that's okay. But comment below and tell me your format and how you do eBay. Why do you do auction? Why do you do, um, what other options are there? I just like buy it now. When I see a bag I like for a price I like with free shipping and buy it now, there's like boom, let's do it. Okay. We covered that one. This is gonna be long. Should I make it into a couple of videos? eBay continued. <laughs> All right, let's see what's next. Um, if international works for you, that is something you're gonna to have to consider. There's gonna be an option on eBay where they talk about international shipping, and I normally just say no. And I hate it because I know there's bag lovers everywhere in the world, but um, for cost efficiency, I don't do international. I'm sorry guys but you know what if I think if a seller reached out to me or if it was through Facebook I would really like work with them if they covered shipping I could get them the bag um, yeah I already said eBay is more successful with well-known high-quality companies so uh, research these fees on eBay it can be 10 to 20 percent of the selling price and you know what, if you really need to make some funds, if you got medical bills, if you've got rent, you need to sell it, just, that's okay. You're making a sale. But if you have time, try other avenues. I've even tried Instagram to sell some stuff. And it works out well, but I mean, uh, get creative, you know, if you really have to make money. Okay. Let's just keep going. What else do you have to do? When to sell a bag. Let me see what this says. When you hesitate using it for more than one reason, whether excluded. So if you're hesitating using a bag because of weight, 
because of what you think people will say about the bag. I've I've had that feeling before. Um, but I said, except weather. So if it's raining, I don't use certain bags. That bothers me a little bit, but not enough to sell it. I wrote these like a couple months ago, and I'm just reflecting on them. Um, if weight is an issue, and you have health issues, sell it, always. Your health is always more important than these little bags. It's not being used or in rotation. I never set out to do this to have a collection. I do believe some people do this to have a collection. I don't need to collect these. I want to use them. I want to let them go. I want to get them for great prices. I want to explain to you all the values, pros and cons of a bag, but it was never to have a collection. So if it's not in rotation, I set it aside in a different room in a basket, like a laundry basket, and just consider selling it. And sometimes it gets back in rotation. That's happened a lot. I have one bag that Henry from JW Hume it always comes back in my collection even though I want to let it go. So I feel you. Uh, the idea of someone using it daily makes you happy. Here's a big one guys. If you have a bag and you really like it but you can think of like a friend who would use it every day and love it and has never had a leather bag if that person using it makes you more happy than you owning it, that is perfect time. That's a perfect time to let it go. So just think of somebody else's happiness. Not don't give it away to your friend. Like take the time and sell it, great pictures and everything. But if you truly aren't finding as much joy as you think somebody else would, let it go. Uh, and if you found another bag that suits the same needs, use the funds to purchase the bag. So that's very much the case with this medium satchel. I feel like the Love 41 Hobo Purse is going to do the job that that medium satchel is, so it's just kind of an one in, one out. That one's done. All right, this is me complaining. Uh, well, that's when to buy a bag. <laughs> so here's the headers of these note cards. Um, using PayPal, did you know horror stories using social media to buy sell United States Postal Service and how to buy a bag I think I'm gonna stop it here and I'm gonna push record and we're gonna make it a different video so stay tuned